It's not, oh. it's not balanced in the laning phase, and that's the same opener they used yesterday, isn't it? Yeah, Tiny Void, one of the most broken combos right now with the new Ag Scepter yep. on Tiny. You can dump in, what, like 2,000 AoE damage into a Chrono mid to late game? And the only weakness of Tiny's Ags is that people can get out of it. There's really no, other than a select few abilities in all of Dota, there's nothing that moves people out of Chrono, and that's exactly. what makes Void just so potent to be able to pick this early. And, and if there were abilities that did so, they'd be supports for the yeah. most part. You know, the Vengeful Spirit as an example. You can't really choose that anymore as PSG LGD. You'd have a very one-dimensional uh, three-hero core, and what, you're gonna run like a mid Rubik or something? It's We've seen it in the past, but you're most likely just gonna have to make do with Rubik ET as your 4-5. Overall, stylistically, I, I think a lot of the analysts have been saying when you look at, at LGD, you say that this is a team that's playing textbook Dota at the highest level, right? Like, they don't need to recreate, come out with, with any cheese necessarily. They're going to just be able to do what you would expect a team to do, but they do it the best. Do we expect to see that in this draft? Absolutely, but you need this this execution level in the late game. They're going to need some way to make team fights simple for them. Maybe some reliable way to shut down the Void from getting his Chrono off. Because if that Chrono goes off, whoever's in it is going to die. And that just makes the game, like, you're, you're operating on such pins and needles. And we saw Liquid do something similar with the Wyvern last pick yesterday, where they were playing up against this Mag, this high physical damage lineup, but they had that trump card, the just combo break that would deal with the huge AoE ultimate. So in this scenario, I think it's PSGLG you've got to look for something like that. And unfortunately, again, it's the supports. They already have them selected. So unless they want to do something unconventional, you're in a rough spot. And I love the bands from Liquid. They take out the two, arguably the two best strength-based initiators that are mid and maybe comfort heroes. It would be an excellent counter to the Void. You tank through the Chrono, as you said, you can't really, you have to stay inside of it. Yeah. So you need survivability. Yeah, and also Kunkka the X is really good against Void's escape mechanism. So it's almost as dual, like you have the initiation factor that shuts down the Void from those two heroes. And also, like you said, if you get them in the Chrono, it doesn't necessarily mean they die. Right, eating ships, not going to be a worry now that they get that out of the way. What do you expect to see? What holes need to be filled here, Kyle? That's a tough question, Rich. They take out the Lion, this is the turn probably the most important part of a draft from the second pick position because you know last pick usually have a lot of time remaining you know uh, what kind you know what hole you're looking to fill in your draft whereas here you have so many different ways to go because there's heroes you might want but now as an example you take centaur you've revealed that this is your off laner you've got the support combination there isn't much role versatility remaining they're going to look to just save their course for the last two picks and counter what they feel like liquid's doing so just just to reiterate that if if you're looking at, as like probably out of all the analysts i'm probably the second lowest of or something like that. Uh, when you look at this third pick, do you go, okay, this is when all of a sudden we start to see where the chips are falling? Is, is this really that pressure point? The LGD has kind of just said, this is how we're going to approach fights. They've given you a lot of damage, the, count, the disengage as well as the engage from your Centaur ultimate, but they haven't really said, this is how we plan to win the game. This is yeah. what scales us into the game. All these heroes are kind of enablers to whatever is going to be picked. And it's cool, because you look at the different philosophies where Liquid, they just come out and they one, two pick their one and their two. Yeah. PSG LGD, they're, as you said, setting up the rest of their draft, whereas Liquid's like, look, we know the concept that works. As God said, I really love the point. OG approaches Dota as an art. Liquid, it's a science. They are very, very prepared. They boot camp by far longer than any other team, and it's no surprise they're here. And also, you day. know, if we're going to call Liquid scientists, they've definitely been in the lab. They have played so many games on the main stage already, dropping down to that lower portion of the bracket, facing elimination in just 9-0 and oh to get here. And I actually spoke to Puppy yesterday after he was eliminated, and the first thing that he said was, my team got better in the loser's bracket. Yep. And I think that that's something that Lick will be able to bring today. I love this Marana pick. I was thinking to myself, I wanted a support that would make my job as a Void easier to get a Chrono off. And when you're Marana Invis, there's, it's just hard for them to ever go on your Void. Yep. And when you have the superior team fight, it's also important to ensure you have some sort of hero that acquires vision. Marana, you scout with arrows, sure, but it's more about the Invis. So if you have a terrain or just any sort of engagement that Liquid have more information, 
there's no save for the Chrono right now. There's an arrow follow-up. You're going to be able to 100 to 0 a target, no problem. You just need to be sure that you are the ones actually initiating the engagement. Yeah, and it's even nicer with Marana nowadays because you play it as a four for people who haven't been keeping up with the tournament. It's a hero that was first banned almost through all throughout the group stage. And as the tournament's gone on, people have been like, okay, well, now we can't really deal with Alchemist anymore. Now that's kind of taking the slot of Marana. And being able to pick up such a high-value hero in this meta third in the draft, I, I mean, it synergizes well with the Void as well, the, the guaranteed setup for Arrow. Uh, you're going to most likely pair it in lane with something that sets it up. Uh, the, the most popular has been Ogre throughout the tournament, but obviously first round banned. And I always like to kind of try to take a peek into what we think the game's going to look like. First, let's talk about this gyro. I like it. Um, I'm a big fan of mixed damage cores when you're playing with an Elder Titan. Mm -hmm. The spirit increases magical damage, the hero, the physical. So late game, you get up close and personal. Doesn't matter if there's BKBs, that gyro is going to be doing tons of bonus damage thanks to the minus armor. But early mid game, a spirit, a rocket, the gyro Q, the ultimate, it's so much damage. And, and typically, especially even if you haven't been following Dota as much this year, I mean, you go back to maybe like the CQ Major, and it was obviously still very popular. When you think of Gyro and Io, they're basically the Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie of Dota, right? This is just a power couple, and you typically did see them together, but when they're separated, they're still pretty dang good, especially here in this meta. We've seen Gyro by itself quite a bit, and Io all of a sudden becoming a core. It definitely has become uh, quite iconic to see both of them by themselves. And when we've been talking about IO even, we're not necessarily thinking about the gyro. Yeah. I would love to see something like an Oracle coming out for Liquid. It's really good in landing a Centaur. You can purge the Retaliate buff, and it, there's so much magic damage. Having a save on a hero like Void or Tiny, I think, will make their fights even easier. It doesn't necessarily have to be that exact hero, but uh, I, I personally would prefer the counter initiation aspect. Uh, because you have so much reliable damage if you can get it off that as long as one of your main cores doesn't die right at the start of the fight, I have to envision fights will go yeah. in Liquid's favor. And, and to Rich's point about like the history going into this game, right? You've got already FY Rubik. You've got maybe who beat me like four years ago at TI5 with a mid gyro. Ame also exceptional at it. And they're looking to go toe to toe with Liquid in the early to mid game. A wow. fourth pick tinker. They did this the other day. Yes, they did. The damage in Chrono is almost, it was already there, and now it's really there. Gyro doesn't like to play against heroes that punish you for running in, and Tinker probably on my on my book is like the number one on that and, list. And you look at it, Gyro is the main source of your damage, the PSGLG lineup. It's all about setting up this hero to do maximum DPS. Liquid, you now have tools. There's no counter to Chrono right now on the, on the Radiant Draft, and this, this is very dangerous, because if the game goes late enough, it's child's play. Your Kronos for the gyro, you kill him. Well, th that's the big thing that I do want to bring up. You say, if the game goes late enough, how long is it going to take for something like this Tinker to really get online? I don't really think it's going to take that long, to be honest. Once he gets a blink, he's incredibly survivable this game. He is going to have that fragile window where he gets the boots, like before the boots of travel, before the blink comes out, that they have so much gap closed with the centaur that all these heroes can get on top of him. But once he gets it, I don't see how they kill him. It's less, I think, about killing Tinker, more about trying to take his tier ones early. Yeah. Something okay. yeah. the Alliance guy said on panel about this centaur. You want to play away from him for the initial eight to 12 minutes of the game. Let him shove waves, let him tank towers, hit them back. If he can kill tier ones, as the other heroes of PSG LGD can rotate around the map, make Wii's life difficult, that's gonna be a big edge for them. If you leave Tinker towers to teleport to, it's near. it becomes harder and harder to push out lanes and actually take any sort of objectives, which buys so much time for Liquid. I, I do want to go back to that Rubik as well. I, I feel like if you're if you're just hopping in, watching right now, and you've watched TIs, you know that face. Uh, that, I think that this is just one of the most picked heroes at this tournament, uh, period. Uh, and by product of that, one of the most winningest heroes that you can lock in. And if it's not broke, you don't need to fix it. Indeed. And the beauty of it is we've seen him make such incredible plays on this main stage already. The FY Rubik, the game iconic where he stole the Phoenix egg after Supernova to get it off, turn around a big engagement. The Void's going to have to be very careful because if you don't time dilate after Chronosphere, FY is real quick. He says he's only got three to five years. He's already been, been here for five. And Wait, I love Shadow Demon is still in the draft ninth pick? This is a hero. <laughs> like, okay. And you have the setup. I even like it almost more than the Oracle. I said I wanted a save, and now it's not only just a save, but like you said, in the early to mid game, it's a nice, reliable, low cooldown setup for the arrow. I, I That Puro is one of the most busted yeah. heroes in all of Dota, in my opinion. And I guess sometimes when there's just all these heroes going up in value throughout the tournament, these heroes get forgotten. Yeah, and mind control, right? Oh! 
That's, there's your tinker counter right yep. there. All of a sudden, PSGL TD, they've got this excellent team fight, and as soon as you get in to the point of the game where Spectre can just go straight for Tinker, they have so much damage, so much vision control. That's a really cool 22 pick by LGD. If he can get past the early to mid game on Spectre, the Shadow Demon does cause a lot of issues that early yeah. on, but if you get past that stage, you are the be-all, end-all counter. Tinker. And you can toggle the Radiance too, right? Absolutely. So Shadow Demon, you will not be able to steal it. We've seen Ame go multiple different builds. Can go either way, but this is... This is, this is one of the more balanced drafts I've yeah. seen so far on the main stage. This is going to be great. All right, so we're, we're liking what we do see in the draft on both sides, but to really shine a light on how both of these teams can potentially win, we are going